Chinese are quite particular about dining. Thanks to their love of food, there is an astounding variety of Chinese cuisine, coupled with unique anecdotes and etiquette. And thus, a great nation of gourmet has come into being. Delicacies are everywhere around us, not just in gourmet restaurants, but in our daily lives as well. The chef is cutting tofu into thin slices. He is extremely careful while doing this, otherwise the tofu will be mashed. Stir the meat paste with shrimp, spring onion and ginger to make the stuffing. Put the stuffing in the tofu slice, wrap it and press it tight. Steam it for about 10 minutes and then glaze it with soup stock. The graceful looking and delicious dish has a unique name, Ba Gong Mountain Tofu Dumplings. What's special about the dish is that the tofu used in it comes from Ba Gong Mountain on the south banks of the Huai River in Anhui province. It's said it boasts a more than 2,000 year history of tofu making. Bagong Mountain is located two kilometers north of the ancient town of Shou County in Anhui province. In the Western Han Dynasty, eight famous scholars lived on the mountain and were called Bagong, meaning eight gentlemen. Though the mountain was named after them, it became well known as the birthplace of tofu. The township of Shaw County, at the foot of Bagong Mountain, was once owned by Liu An, the king of Huainan, 2,100 years ago. He was the grandson of Han Dynasty Emperor. When the palace of Huainan King was renovated in 2001, a sculpture of Liu An was erected, not as the king of Huainan, but as the inventor of tofu. Was he the inventor of tofu? Historically, Liu was famous for his interest in Daoism. Some even believe that he invented alchemy, which is why people also think he invented tofu. The painting on the wall tells the whole story. One day, when Liu and his hangers-on were making immortality pills, gypsum was added to the soy milk by mistake. A miracle happened as the soy milk gradually coagulated. In the end, instead of obtaining immortality pills, Liu stumbled upon the delicacy tofu. More archaeological research will be needed to find out whether Liu Han was indeed the inventor of tofu. One thing for sure though, is that the historical record detailing Bagong Mountain Tofu appeared early in the book in the 6th century. This is Qi Di, a town in Anhui province. In September, villagers are busy harvesting their most important crop, soybeans. Qi Di is located at the northern foot of Bagong Mountain and is surrounded by the Huai River. Thanks to its favorable location, it enjoys moist soil with ample sunshine, which is perfect for growing soybeans. Local legend has it that an alchemist accidentally spilled gypsum into the soy milk and was astonished by the resulting bean curd. Thus, Qi Di has long been associated with tofu making and is regarded as the best tofu village. This is a well-known tofu manufacturer in Qi Di. 
Chi Ching Chuan is the head of the company. Like many other Qi Di residents, Qi Ching Chuan's family has been making and selling tofu for generations. Today, he is trying to make and market Ba Gong Mountain Tofu, offering an increased tofu products. Today, modern machines have greatly improved productivity. But to make the traditional Ba Gong Mountain Tofu requires seven to eight steps, making tofu a time-consuming and labor-intensive job. Despite the hard work, Qi hopes to pass on the traditional craft. Since it was the birthplace of tofu, how is production of Bagong Mountain tofu different from other places? The bigger mill is used to grind the beans into halves. Dip the halves in the water long enough so that the soybean cells swell allowing the rich protein, fat, and other nutrients to be easily dissolved. The next step is to wet grind the beans into soy milk. Only when the beans are finely milled can the soy protein in them be fully leached out. This is to filter the slurry from the soy milk. It's not only complicated manual work, but also a process that requires some special technical skills. After the filtration is done, the soy milk then needs to be boiled in a large pot. Put the cooked soy milk into a large bowl. When its temperature drops to about 90 degrees centigrade, add the gypsum. In tofu making, putting the gypsum in at the right time is crucial. When the gypsum is slowly added to the soy milk and the mixture is then blended carefully, the liquid eventually gels into what we call jellied bean curd. Wrap the gelatinous tofu with cheesecloth and then you can move on to the last procedure, which is pressing it. When the water is completely squeezed out, the tofu is ready. This mural was unearthed from the number one Da Hu Ping tomb of the Han Dynasty in Sunmi, Henan province. When it was discovered, it was regarded as a painting depicting winemaking. After investigation, experts believed it actually depicted tofu production in the Eastern Han Dynasty. The craft has been remained. 
in the Compendium of Materia Medica, completed in 1578, says, Liu An, the king of Huainan, invented tofu. It seems the belief of Liu An as the inventor of tofu has existed for quite a long time. The book also describes its medicinal benefits as helping the spleen and the stomach. The nutritional value of tofu has long been recognized. It's abundant in protein, of which 92 to 95 percent of it can be absorbed by human bodies. To ancient Chinese, as well as other Asian people who had less meat in their daily diet, tofu was undoubtedly an important source of protein. It's no wonder that people love it so much. For over 1,000 years, people from all walks of life have had a fondness for tofu, with an ever-increasing number of tofu dishes enriching our life. This is a map of Chengdu in the 1860s. At that time, a man named Chen Senfu ran a small restaurant at Wang Fu Chao near the city's north gate. Porters with poor wages led a very difficult life. Cheap and nutritious tofu was their daily food. Chen's wife, Liu, fried tofu with some ground meat, chili powder, and broad bean paste from Sichuan's Pi County, which eventually became a popular delicacy. Legend has it that Liu's face was pockmarked and she was called Chen Ma Po. The dish was thus named Ma Po Tofu, and the name of the restaurant later changed to Chen's Ma Po Tofu Restaurant. This is the famous Ma Po Tofu, with over a century of history, renowned in China and abroad. First, cut the tofu into two centimeter cubes. Cook the cubes in boiled water with a bit of salt added for flavor. Fry in a pan some minced beef, add some broad bean paste and fry the paste until it turns a glossy red. Then put in the chili powder, fermented soybeans and stir fry it. Add some water and put in the tofu. Over a high flame, quickly fry the tofu. Add some stock and some soy sauce and continue to cook it on a high heat so that the tofu can easily absorb the flavors. The next step is also the most important one, which is thickening the sauce with cornstarch. The thickening process must be repeated three times so that the spicy and delicious sauce can cling to the tofu. Ma Po tofu is savory, tender, and smooth. Basically, every Chinese household can cook the dish, which explains its popularity. Sichuan people have loved tofu since ancient times. No longer satisfied with traditional cooking methods, they've come up with numerous exotic recipes of their own. The main ingredient of this dish is tofu. Fry the tofu in oil until it turns gold. Add boiling hot, edible alkali into a big bowl and steep the fried tofu in the water for half an hour. The alkali turns the inner part of tofu into soup while its fried skin remains unchanged. When the tofu is soaked in water, you can prepare the ingredients. Cut the chicken skin into rhombic slices and steam the chicken skin with stock, salt, ginger and green onion. Cut the bamboo shoots and tomatoes into slices.
Boil the soaked tofu in a fresh soup to get rid of the alkali flavor. Add the newly made stock, salt, cooking wine into the pot and cook it until it starts to boil. Finally, add the tofu and other ingredients into the stock. The chef must be extremely careful during this entire process. If the tofu breaks, the dish is considered a failure. When one picks it up with chopsticks, the tofu looks like a pocket as delicious soup is contained within the thin tofu skin. Thus the dish is called pocket tofu and has a history of over 300 years. But few people know how to cook it today. One cannot help but admire the inventor of the dish who didn't bother to leave their name behind. They, however, succeeded in bringing out the ultimate charm in tofu. Today, people are still trying to develop new tofu delicacies. Thus, the legend of tofu continues. The owner of Gong's Si Ba Tofu restaurant, Gong Fun, is the designated successor of the Si Ba tofu making tradition which is part of Sichuan's intangible cultural heritage. Today, her restaurant offers some 600 varieties of tofu, of which over 30 were inherited from her ancestors. I'm the the Siba is located in Lershan City and next to Min River in the east. With moist soil, the place abounds in soybeans. During the mid Ming Dynasty, it started to produce and sell tofu. Then, in the Qing Dynasty, the tofu industry grew considerably. Legend has it that the origin of Siba tofu is closely related to the Lershan giant Buddha. The construction of the Buddha began in the early 8th century. One day, the workers were exhausted from the hot weather. A monk named Hai Tong, who led the construction, made tofu for the workers, who quickly regained their strength, thus accelerating the construction. Such a story is impossible to verify. However, tofu does play a dominant role in local cuisine. Most parts of Sichuan are situated in a basin that enjoys a humid subtropical climate. Rich in rainfall and surrounded by high cliffs and gorges, the place is wreathed in clouds. Thanks to its geological and climatic conditions, Sichuan has been the cradle of some of the most unique art, literature, and a seemingly inexhaustible variety of delicacies. Even the exotic flowers serve as an inspiration for new dishes. This is known as the dove tree. Each spring, when it blooms, the white flowers appear like doves standing on the branches. Inspired by the flowers, Gong invented a tofu dish called Dove Tree Tofu. The key to making the dish is the dove-like flowers. Finally, Gong came up with the idea to make tofu pancakes with pea meal, flour and tofu. Though the final product is quite similar to the dove tree flower, the taste isn't satisfying. After several experiments, Gong gave up the flour component using only pea meal and tofu. The tofu pancakes were finally a success. 
When the mainly tofu stuffing is added, the taste is quite rich. Thus, with Gong's efforts, tofu has not only become a delicacy, but a work of art. Gongfen developed a tofu banquet based on the traditional sea bar tofu banquet. A square of tofu, which is a rather plain looking food, can be changed into hundreds of dishes. Such as bear paw tofu, lantern tofu, fireworks tofu, peacock tofu, pomegranate tofu, and many more. It not only offers abundant nutrition, but also satisfies our cravings for unique delicacies. At dusk, Gong Fan enjoys the pleasures of family life, with her grandson just like millions of ordinary people. It's early autumn. The Ling Yuan Mountain stands in silence with the water of the Min River slowly flowing eastward. With our life full of love and enthusiasm, perhaps we can find even more profound things. What does pastry mean to Chinese? And how does it influence our life and diet? What's its importance to China's food culture? Please join us for part five of Discovering Chinese Cuisine.